Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Esculenta Science. Do you know in the face of limited resources and ongoing population growth, food security through preservation is becoming increasingly important with regard to feeding people around the world and keeping them healthy. Therefore, food preservation is a very important topic and today we are going to talk about the preservation methods. Preservation should be initiated when the foods are separated from the medium of immediate growth. For an example, plant from soil or water, meat from the animal after slaughter, milk from normal secretion of mammalian glands. And the methods of preservation depend on the origin of foods, particularly whether they are of plant or animal origin. Basically, food preservation method can be categorized as inhibition of chemical deterioration and microbial growth, directly inactivate bacteria, yeast, and molds or enzymes, and avoid recontamination before and after processing. Here you can see a number of techniques or methods from the above categories that we can use for the food preservation. Freezing Concentrating, dried-like methods can be used to inhibition. Sterilization, pasteurization, irradiation-like methods can be done to inactivate microorganisms and enzymes. HACCP and good manufacturing methods we can use to avoid recontamination. While the currently used traditional preservation procedures continue in one or more of these three ways, there have recently been great efforts to improve the quality of food products principally to meet the requirements of consumers through the avoidance of extreme use of any single technique. The methods based on inhibition can be done by controlling extrinsic and intrinsic factors. As an example, the danger zone for microbial growth is considered to be between 5 Celsius and 60 Celsius. Thus, chilling and storing at the temperature below 5 Celsius is one of the most popular methods of food preservation. The use of chemicals in food is a well-known method of food preservation. Wide varieties of chemicals or additives are used in food preservation. Some additives are entirely synthetic, not found in nature, such as phenolic antioxidant and others are extracted from natural sources such as vitamin E. Irrespective of origin, food additives must accomplish some desired function in the food to which they are added, and they must be safe to consume under the intended conditions of use. We can use acid as preservatives. When a weak acid is dissolved in water, equilibrium is established between undissociated acid molecules and charged anions. The proportion of undissociated acid increasing with the decreasing of pH. The currently accepted theory of preservative action suggests inhibition via depression of internal pH. Undissociated acid molecules are lipophilic and pass readily through the plasma membrane by diffusion. In the cytoplasm, approximately at pH 7, acid molecules dissociate into charged anion and cations. They cannot pass across the lipid bilayer and accumulate in cytoplasm, thus lowering pH and inhibiting metabolism. There are several limitations to the value of organic acids as microbial inhibitors in foods. They are usually ineffective when initial level of microorganisms are high. And also, many microorganisms use organic acids as metabolizable carbon sources. Also, there is an inherent variability in resistance of individual strains and also the degree of resistance may also depend on the conditions. 
Nitrites and nitrates are used in many foods as preservative and functional ingredients. These are critical components used to cure meat and they are known to be multifunctional food additives and potent antioxidants. Also, many plants contain compounds that have some antimicrobial activity collectively referred to as green chemicals or biopreservatives. Interesting naturally occurring antimicrobial system has expanded in recent years in response to consumers' requirements for fresher, more natural, additive-free foods. A range of herbs and spices are known to possess antibacterial activity as a consequence of their chemical composition. Herbs and spices have been used for centuries by many cultures to improve the flavor and aroma of foods. Essential oils show antimicrobial properties which are soluble in alcohol and to a limited extent in water. They consist of a mixture of esters, aldehydes, ketones and terpenes. They not only provide flavor to the product but also preservation activity. Scientific studies have identified the active antimicrobial agents of many herbs and spices. These include eugenol in cloves, alcine in garlics, cinnamic aldehyde and eugenol in cinnamon. Antibiotics could be medical and non-medical. Non-medical antibiotics such as natamycin and nisine produce either by microbes or synthetically. They can inhibit microbes at very low concentrations. When a chemical is used in preservation, the main question is how safe is it? There should be a risk-benefit analysis. Antimicrobial agents or preservatives are diverse in nature, but legal, toxicological, marketing and consumer consideration have created a trend such that both the number and amount of preservatives in use are diminishing rather than increasing. So, these are the basic things that you should know about the food preservation methods. If you need any clarification, please leave a comment. I will discuss each and every food preservation technique in future videos. Thank you.